I don't know if what you told me before we start, we press record. I think I told you I have one question that I've been asking everyone, my mm. impromptu question, but you might have answered it earlier, but I'll let you have a clear playing field. But okay. what is your favorite? Now, it doesn't have to be business related, but what is your favorite book or what book do you like or would you want to share to tell people about? Oh, gosh. Now, this is really tough. Why didn't you ask me that question before? Because I want tell to So I was warned. I know, like, I, I, I have, if I showed you. The I first want- thing in my head? Um, all right. Well, actually, it's a book by Irving Yalom called Love's Executioner. And it's a book about this amazing ex- existential therapist. And he tells the different stories. Uh, but you asked me the first book that, I, that came to my mind, and it's truly that. And he tells the stories of his one-on-one connections with people. And um, it's where a therapist understands and anybody else that really connects with people in that real intimate way that Um, you hear his version of it and it makes me feel like it made me feel so much like this is really what I want to do. I want to come alongside people and help them get out of their funk because that's really why people come to a therapist. They, they need to get out of the funk and they just need, they need a, a friendly person to help them do it. Hopefully they know what the heck they're doing too, but, uh, (laughs) But the truth is, is that this, the relationship is the most important thing. You could be the most skilled therapist on the planet, but it's the relationship. It's the way the, pre, the people connect. So that's the book, the Love, Love's Executioner by Irving Yalom. Yalom? Is that what you're saying? Yalom. Y-A-L-O-M. Okay. So part of why I'm doing this and I guess once entrepreneurs start hearing the other entrepreneurs show, it won't be as much of a surprise. But I think that we're all readers, right? Chances are you're not an entrepreneur if you're not a reader. I just kind of feel that way. I always get a new book in the mail, like at least once a week. Yeah, exactly. Because we want to know. And honestly, there's this whole, there's probably a top 10 that every entrepreneur either heard of or read or did the thing. And so far, by not telling people the question and and having them overthink it and, you know, talk about Napoleon Hill or all the, you know, all the ones, I'm getting some really nice options so that we might not have thought of. Like, I would have never probably done this one. So I'm going to be searching them all and putting them all on my Audible wish list. And I want my audience to be able to expand their horizons, too on different topics. So I appreciate that that's the one you picked because I never would have heard of it. Yeah. And I don't know. I wonder if anybody else would really enjoy the stories, um, but I'm sure they would because they're all lovely. They're very connected and deep. They're kind of intense, intense, but um, you might've noticed I'm quite intense myself. So (laughs) You have not said the F word all show. I'm, I'm almost disappointed. Really? Oh yeah. gosh, I'm really trying. I'm really I, trying. I know, but I'm I'm just so used well, to Well you it. haven't given me cause yet, Bobby. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try not to. Um okay. I did have one question, and I don't know if this is just fresh on my mind. I don't know if it works this way in therapists, but you said that it's about connection. And I had a conversation earlier today about coaching, like you pick your right coach. Not all coaches are in alignment with the client. Is it the same way with therapists? Like, do they kind of interview you and get to know you and vice versa to to make a good relationship? Yeah, I think it's like that. Um, So usually you make an appointment at a convenience because of location, but uh, one silver lining is, is now, um, at least, you know, you have to work within the state that you're in. You can virtually see anyone in that state. So that's what the plus is. But, um, when you see them, you know, they have an opportunity to to decide, do I like you? Do I want to connect with you? And that's really, yeah, the same thing. Not everybody fits with everyone else, you know? 
Yeah. And that was just a curiosity question. And your therapy business, is it, is it just you? I mean, mm-hmm. is this a, just a different version of being an entrepreneur, right? Like it's just not all this hubbub with all the digital marketing and all the hoops that we have to jump through in this newer right. reason that we're learning about. Yeah. So that's a business. Being a therapist is a business because you, you, there's a fee for service, right? And then this other thing of scaling is another business. So I guess you could say I'm twice an entrepreneur. Yeah. You've been doing it a long time. You're a veteran. I'm a, I'm a bit of a veteran, but this, this whole new format of using a lot of social media is new. Uh, and, uh, and somewhat, uh, you know, it's like, oh gosh, am I really going to get on camera with people? Am I really going to be doing this? So you, this, so I'm getting used to, right? Yeah. Don't you think? Absolutely. This is totally out of my comfort zone. Knowing that these video conversations are going out on YouTube is to push me beyond my limits. Like I could do my lives. I can talk to people a little bit on my Facebook, but even when it comes to like Instagram stories and that kind of stuff, I'm not good at showing up. I'm just not. So this is me trying to break through another barrier. And I appreciate you being on that journey with me because the camera, Mm -hmm. I'll I'll tell you, you want to hear a story? You want to hear a true story? I want to. Yes, please. Let's hear it. Okay. So when I was in my early twenties, I wanted to be on wheel of fortune and I tried out a few times and I was, I was a truck driver at the time and they were having tryouts at the casino. Of course, I always like to go to the casino anyway, but they had these tryouts and we waited in line and, and you had to write your name and um, your job and, and some stuff, but you're in a audience of like a thousand or 2000 people and they're randomly drawing your name. I did not get picked, but I got called back. And I think it was cause they thought I was interesting. I was a 22 year old, female truck driver 20 years ago. Right. So it's pretty interesting. So we go, so there's only a hundred of us and we have puzzles that we have to solve and everything. And they call on you and you stand up and they ask you to call a letter, just like you're on the show. And then they put it on bankrupt when they're done talking to you. (laughs) They like manually do it. They only let you do like two or three things. So that experience, I was smart enough on the puzzles. I believed from that moment, and this is the voices in our head, right? That they didn't want me on camera, so I'm not good enough to be on camera. Because I was smart enough to solve the puzzles. I was interesting. So the only thing left was that I wasn't camera friendly. And then just in the last four years, a new station came to the center, interviewed me and another person, And I didn't get used on the camera again. And this was just three years ago. So I have this perception that I'm not wanted on camera. So this is forcing me to try to get past that. Now, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, because now I'm so confused about negative self-talk and doing the things. But that's where my fear comes from. And I'm trying to address it as it's just fair and it's not going to kill me to be out there. And I'm robbing people of the opportunity to get to know me if I don't show up. That's how I have to frame it for my success.